Welcome to Kari's Conscious Living. Hello, my friends. Do you love Heidi, Cherry, and Vea? And you would love if you got exclusive stories that weren't available anywhere else. If you join my patron, Cat Club, you will get three stories every month for $7 on the 7th of every month. If you want to join the club and it's okay with your guardians or your parents, then follow the link below and become a patron and join the Cat Club. Namaste, my little friends. Are you ready to meditate with Kari? Try and lay down in bed. Make sure that you've got your comfortable pajamas on. The light is just right. You have your snuggly teddy or your favorite cuddly squishy. Whatever you need so that you know that you can relax your body and let go of your day and try and fall to sleep. Heidi, Cherry and Vea had discovered something new for them. Even though it doesn't sound like something very special to most people. Believe it or not, Cherry, Heidi and Vea had never had bubblegum before. They'd received a care packet from one of their great, great friends in Ireland. And it had three packs of bubblegum in it. Cherry said, You know, I just can't wait. I just can't wait. Oh my goodness me. OMG, I'm super excited. You know, there's something really awesome about having a candy that you've never had before, don't you think? What does it say, Heidi? What does it say on the packet? Heidi said, Well, I've read it. All it says is the ingredients and bubblegum. We'll just have to give it a try. Vea said, "Mm, Me heard about bubblegum one time, and apparently you can blow big bubbles with it, and then they pop on your face. Cherry said, Ugh, that sounds gross. That sounds disgusting. It's going to get stuck in me whiskers. Heidi said, well, maybe not blow the bubble so big, Cherry. Maybe try and blow a small bubble and just see what happens with that. Cherry said, genius. You know, you're so smart, Heidi. You're so smart. What would we do without you? Okay, come on, rip it open. Give it to me. Let me try it. I can't wait for the experience. I mean... Thank goodness our friend, who lives in Ireland, sent us this bubblegum because we've never had it before and and they must have known that we've never had it before. And you know, it sounds so fun, doesn't it? Bubblegum. I mean, it just sounds like it's going to be bursting in your mouth or something. (gasps) I wonder if it's going to be like them pop rocks that we had that one time that like crack and pop on your tongue. Heidi said, maybe. She undid one of the packets and took out three pieces of bubble gum. She gave one to Cherry and one to Vea and started to open the one that she was holding in her paws. It was just one piece, one solid piece of this pink-looking taffy, like like a chew or a candy or something. But it felt just a little bit hard, but at the same time, if you squeezed it with your paw, it was a little bit soft. Heidi said... Well, it's definitely not Pop Rocks. Cherry said, I'm going in. I'm going to try it. It smells really nice. Cherry put the bubblegum in her mouth and started to chew. It's a bit sticky. It sticks on your teeth a little bit. But I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. I'm not giving in. The more she chewed, the more she felt this really big, strong urge to blow a bubble. Thank goodness, Fair had heard a little bit about bubblegum and knew that you could do that. Cherry put her lips together and started to blow and the bubblegum formed into a tiny little bubble and then popped instantly. (gasps) This is awesome! OMG, I love it! I absolutely love it! This is so cool! Vaya, try it! Vaya, Vaya, try it! Vaya put the bubblegum in her mouth 
chewed for a minute or two and then started blowing bubbles. She was instantly very good at it. I think princesses are naturally good at blowing bubbles because, you know, they just are. Heidi was chewing her bubble gum and then she started blowing bubbles too. Heidi blew a bubble about as big as a paw and then it popped and stuck in her whiskers and she laughed, but it easily came off her whiskers. Cherry said, oh, this is it. This is it. It's on. It's on. Now that I know I'm not going to get drenched in bubble gum and I'm going to have to have like one of them really weird, horrible baths where they scrub and scrub and scrub and scrub. You know, like that time when I fell in that pot of paint. Oh, horrendous. Yeah. So now I know that bubble gum comes off your face and it doesn't really stick that much. Well, this bubble gum doesn't anyway. Then that's it. Bubblegum competition, guys. Bubblegum competition. Who can blow the biggest, biggest, biggest bubblegum? I mean like the biggest bubble in the entire world. That big that you could probably get inside of the bubble and you could like go on a journey or something. That would be so awesome. Right, let's do it. All three cats decided that that was an absolutely brilliant idea. Heidi was blowing her bubbles. Flyer was blowing her bubbles. Cherry was blowing her bubbles. They kept getting bigger and bigger, but then they would pop. They didn't stay whole very long. And then Cherry blew this bubble that was almost as big as her head, got super excited and need to go to the bathroom. I'm going to pee myself. I'm so happy. Oh my gosh, this is so much fun. But you know what? I've just had this really, really, really important download. I'll tell you when I get back from the toilet. Cherry went to the toilet and then when she came back, she said that she thought to make the bubbles even bigger, they would need two pieces of bubble gum in their mouth, not just one piece. Because when she blew the bubble that was almost as big as her head, it took all the bubble gum that she had in her mouth to do it. So if you were going to blow a bubble that you could actually get inside that was bigger than your body, you would need at least two, maybe three pieces of bubble gum. Heidi said that that was very smart of Cherry to think of that and agreed. So she opened up all the bubble gum packets. Heidi, Cherry and Vea decided to divide all the bubble gum, each, three pieces each inside of their tiny little cat mouths. It was quite difficult to chew. Vea was dribbling and drooling all over because her mouth was a little bit tinier than Cherry's and Heidi's because she's a bit smaller. She kept chewing and chewing and slavering and chewing and laughing because it was very funny to watch each other trying to chew the mouthfuls of bubble gum that they got. Then, it got to just the right texture. You know, when you're chewing bubblegum and you know it's good enough, it's chewed enough, it's like the perfect chewiness to start to blow bubbles. They were there. Heidi blew a bubble, instantly bigger than a head. <gasps> said Cherry. It's going to work. Cherry blew a bubble. It was about half the size of her body. Vea blew a bubble and it just kept going. She was good, like I said. She was very good at this. She blew and blew and blew and blew and the bubble got bigger and bigger and bigger to the point that all three cats could jump inside of the bubble. And that's exactly what they did without talking to each other. They instantly knew what they were going to do. The bubble did not break. The bubble was floating hovering off the floor with Heidi, Cherry and Vea inside of it. Cherry almost lost it. Thank goodness I'd already peed. Thank goodness I'd already got to the toilet. <laughs> this is so exciting. Where shall we go? Where shall we go? Oh my gosh, it's moving. It's moving. It's moving higher. It's moving higher up. It's moving higher up. Heidi said, I suggest we just sit down and enjoy the ride. Vea said, OMG, this is just like um, that flying carpet Disney one. Which one is that one? The one where they fly on the magic carpet and go on, and on, on, on adventures and all of that wonderful stuff. Cherry said, you're talking about Aladdin? 
Oh, yeah, that's an awesome one. I love that one too. A magic bubble. We're going on a magic bubble ride, guys. Let's all pause because I'm a little bit nervous. What if this bubble pops when we're like flying through the sky or something and we all instantly fall into a river and we have to swim 10,000 miles to get home? Or what if the bubble pops over, over, over the desert and we land on the sand and the sand is nice and soft and it's really cushy so we'll be safe. But we're in the middle of the desert in a drought and then we're there we are like Arabian now. Walking and walking and walking and walking And there's no camels in sight And then we're walking and walking and walking For 15 million years And then by the time we get home We dried up like a raisin Because it was so hot in the desert Oh gosh, that doesn't sound very nice I'm a bit nervous Can we all pause please? Can we all pause? The cats all sat in a circle and held a pause so that they felt safe and connected and they had each other's backs. It's always nice with your sisters or your brothers or your bestest friends when you know that you're there and you love each other and you support each other and you have each other's backs. That's exactly what the cats were doing, even though they were laughing hysterically because the bubble ride was jiggling them all over the place. The bubble flew out the window of their bedroom and started to get higher and higher and higher. Cherry kept screaming the obvious things. Oh gosh, look at them trees. OMG, look at them houses. Oh my goodness, watch out for the bird. They were flying through the sky in their big magical bubblegum bubble, going higher and higher and then the wind picked up. And when the wind picked up, the bubble started to fly through the sky full speed. I mean full speed. Like when you watch a leaf and it's been blown around in the wind, but then all of a sudden there's a gust of wind and it blows super fast and that's it. It's gone and you can't see it anymore. It was just like that. The bubble just disappeared like it was flying through the sky faster than the speed of light. The cats couldn't see where they were going. They were just in a blur of clouds, like when you're on an aeroplane and you look out the window and all you see is mist and clouds. Right when you're in the middle of a cloud and the windows get wet, well, the bubble got wet and Cherry panicked. Oh no, this bubble's definitely going to pop. We're going to pop in the middle of a cloud and then we're going to fall and then maybe we won't fall. Maybe we'll just get rained on and then we'll be drenched and then and then, and then then we might fall and then if we fall, we might land in a garbage bin and then if we land in a garbage bin, it might be garbage day and then the garbage man will come in the garbage truck and then they'll take us to the garbage pile and then we'll get lost forever in the garbage pile. Heidi said, don't panic. I think we're safe. This bubble is so thick of bubblegum, nothing's going to get in. It's like a magic spaceship. We're fine, said Heidi. Bea said, me thinks we're fine too. I just love this. Nothing ever, ever, ever goes wrong in Aladdin. So, well, maybe sometimes it does, but, you know, I think we're safe. We're going on a magical journey through the clouds. How many people can say that they've been through the clouds, Cherry? No one, especially in a bubble. I mean, we're, we're like, we're like so special right now. We're so lucky, aren't we? You're right. I, so, I should, I should try and think of something to be grateful for because then that'll take my mind off the negativity. <gasps> But what if we fall in like in like a river in the middle of like Louisiana or something and there's crocodiles? Oh, wait a minute. No, 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 no. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for this magic bubble. I'm so grateful for our friend in Ireland that brought us the bubble gum. I'm so grateful that I'm holding the paws of my sisters and I'm safe. I'm so grateful that, that everything is good in the world. I'm so grateful that this is a super exciting ride. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. Cherry just kept repeating herself over and over and over again. And then, all of a sudden, they blew with this big gust of wind clean out of the cloud that they were in, the big, massive, giant rain cloud that they'd been in for what felt like ages. 
and everything was clear. The wind calmed down. They looked around, saw lots of blue, and then when they looked down, they saw the brightest, brightest colors. Everything was bright yellow, bright green. The flowers on the floor were bright pinks and purples and blues. The grass looked so, so green. It was like this magical place. Like as if your eyes had had supervision all of a sudden and you were seeing just the world around you in a different way. So much brighter, the colours were so radiant and fresh and like dazzling. Everything looked happy because everything was so bright. The reds were so red and intense. The greens were so, so green. Cherry said, I wonder where we are. Vea said, Hmm, maybe this is Disneyland. Apparently, Disneyland is beautiful like this. So pretty and enchanted and the colours are very nice and it's so friendly and, and, and happy looking. OMG, we landed at Disneyland. Do you think that's where we are? Heidi said, well, I don't see any rides. I don't think we are in Disneyland because Disneyland has rides, right? You know, those rides that you go on, like the Pirates of the Caribbean and things like that. Cherry said, no, I don't see any rides either. It just looks like wilderness, like the prettiest place in the entire world. There's hills and mountains and rivers and streams and there's birds of all different colours and it's so nice, just look at it. I wonder if we can land the bubble or whether we just have to get taken wherever the bubble takes us. Freya said, maybe the bubble works from telepathic thoughts. Maybe we just have to think that the bubble needs to land and then we'll land. All three cats put their thoughts together and thought about landing the bubble. The bubble landed. And then, as if by magic, a tiny little door opened on the side of the bubble, inviting the cats to get out into this marvellous, enchanted place. The cats climbed out of the bubble and when they stepped on the grass, they couldn't believe what the grass felt like. It was so soft, and you could smell the grass, really, 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 really smell it. Like when someone's just cut the lawn, and the grass smells clean and fresh on a summer's day. It was like that, but ten million times that. If you were smelling telly on smell vision it would be like, wow! That's definitely grass. That's what the grass smelt like. And then, when they lifted their little noses, they could smell everything else that was there. They could smell the mountain air. They could smell the rivers. They could smell the flowers, the trees, the bark of the trees, the leaves. They could smell everything. It was like smelly land. Smelly land that looked like the most beautiful place on earth. This is the bestest place ever, said Cherry. It's so delicious. I could just smell here all day. Heidi said, oh yes, me too. The smells, I've never smelt anything like it. Vea said, hmm, me thinks this is just beyond this world. It can't possibly be real. And then all of a sudden, Cherry opened her eyes. She looked left and looked right. Heidi was on her right. Rhea was on her left. They were snuggling together on their big, comfortable cat bed. She'd been dreaming all along. 
She chewed in her mouth and there was nothing there. She looked around their bedroom. No packets of chewing gum from their great, great, greatest friend in Ireland. Oh, MJ, said Cherry out loud. Oh, that was like the bestest dream ever. Oh, guys, wake up, wake up. Got to tell you all about it. The cats woke up and Cherry told them the bestest story about this place far, far away, an enchanted place that looked like it was in another world that smelled like smelly world. She went on and on and on until eventually the cats fell back to sleep again, all three of them dreaming about smelly world and the bestest bubblegum ever. The end.